Now you're ready, Garrett. <laughs> Hey what's up everyone, in this video I will be showing you how to build a VSR-10 from complete scratch. The finishing touch will be this handcrafted Terran carving dragon stock. Rawr! Sorry. Anyway, huge thanks to Kevin who bought every single part needed to complete a VSR-10 so I could build it for this video. The VSR-10 platform is the most customizable platform on the airsoft sniper rifle market, which allows you to build one from absolutely nothing as you'll see shortly. The majority of this rifle is made up of Action Army and Maple Leaf parts. Where I'm from, they are the most budget friendly and readily available. The performance output is decent as well. I put a buttload of parts links in the description. For each part, there are many options. Whether you are just watching to watch or to build along with me, I'm going to get started and keep things moving. Don't forget it's a video, so you can pause and rewatch whenever you need to. To begin, I'll be working with the receiver, trigger, and cylinder set. Here we have the Action Army 90 degree trigger. Start by removing the rear mounting block as you have to in order to mount the assembly to the receiver. Take the mounting block and mount it to the bottom of the receiver near the back. The block has to face in this direction as I'm holding it here for the rest of the trigger box mounting holes to line up. Take one of the small allen screws and fasten the block in place, keeping it straight. Now you can take the entire trigger unit and fasten it to the receiver. All of the screws are included and they are pretty self-explanatory where they go. Install the front screw and small rear screws into the mounting block. Make sure everything is snug and we can set that aside and grab the cylinder. It's a good idea to lubricate the cylinder to help with the smoother bolt pull. I like to use WD-40 PTFE Dry Lube or Tech-T. Either of those will get the job done. Typically, a little bit goes a long way, so don't overdo it. Next take your cylinder and slide it into the receiver. If you choose to insert it from the back, the cylinder will get stuck on the trigger sear. Simply use a small flat head to press the sear down and the cylinder will slide past. For this Action Army trigger unit, you want to secure the spring guide stopper. All triggers are different and sometimes you can rely on spring pressure, but I've always had the best results by doing this. Push the spring guide stopper up into place so these holes align. Now there were extra grub screws that came with the Action Army trigger unit, however they are probably for something else so I just use a normal allen screw. Just thread it in through the spring guide stopper and into the other side of the trigger box. Now the spring guide stopper is secure. The cylinder will also stay in the receiver now, it won't be able to slide out. So let's install the rest of the internals. Take some Tech-T or other suitable lubricant and apply it to the spring guide. Not 100% necessary, but I always do it. Then definitely put something on the inside of the cylinder, that's a must. Just don't go ape shit. Last but not least, lubricate the piston o-ring and guide sleeves. You want to apply a generous amount, but if it looks like this, maybe spread it out a little. Anyway, give it a test run and keep your inappropriate comments to yourself. Oh, giggity, 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 goo. Anyway, put the spring in the piston, guide into the spring, and then slide it all into the cylinder. This next part can be tricky and the spring will be under tension, so be careful. Hold the cylinder and receiver firmly while pressing the cylinder head against the top of the piston. Hold tightly and push hard enough to get the cylinder head thread started. Twist the parts to thread the cylinder shut. Then take some needle nose pliers and snug it up. Now I'm going to install the bolt handle. On the Action Army end cap there is a set screw and small cover that needs to be removed in order to attach to the cylinder. Also, for the price of the Action Army end cap, it's ridiculous that it doesn't come with a small spring detent pin or any hardware. It's cool though, I had all of those parts laying around. So take your end cap and pop in the spring and detent pin. The bolt handle should slide onto the back of the cylinder. You will feel the end cap engage where it needs to over the handle. Once you are able to hold the cap flush against the back of the handle, install your screw. Adjusting the tightness of this screw can affect the resistance of lifting the bolt handle. If you have an Action Army end cap, don't forget to pop in the small cover and install the set screw. Now we can perform a leak test. Alright, once you get to this point, the next thing you want to do is check your air seal. So just wrap the bolt back, push the bolt forward, and tightly hold your thumb over the cylinder nozzle hole and pull the trigger. 
If you did everything correctly and everything's lubricated properly, you shouldn't hear the piston impact until you let go after a few seconds. That's what a good air seal sounds like. Also, real quick before moving on, don't forget this black plastic ring. It came with the receiver and it's a cylinder guide ring. In theory, it's supposed to give you a smoother bolt pull and it does help guide things a little bit, but I have a DIY guide to make a full length sleeve if you'd prefer to go that route. I'm going to throw the scope rail on real quick, which is easy. There's just a few small things to watch out for. The shortest screw for the rail goes in the very front hole on the receiver, but don't install it now because the outer barrel has to go in first. I honestly never install the front rail screw on any of my VSRs because if you forget about it, you can easily destroy your barrel threads. Anyway, I would just install the other three screws, tighten them down, and ship it. Depending on your receiver and scope rail, make sure the screws don't hit the cylinder. If they do, just get shorter screws. Moving on to the trigger guard, which can be fun, you may have to make some small modifications. Again, depending on the parts you choose, the trigger guard might not mount properly to the trigger box. The solution is simple. Carefully dremel the guard until it sits flush against the bottom of the trigger box. Install your bedding pillar and screw and it should look like this. Make sure your bedding pillar screw doesn't protrude the rear receiver threads or it could contact the bolt handle and cylinder. Once all of this is squared away, your receiver group is complete and we can move on to the barrel group. So for the bucking, Maple Leaf Autobots are my go-to. Paired with an Omega nub, they are an easily obtainable, reliable drop-in option. For many other bucking and nub combinations for even higher performance, check out the video description. Anyway, this model has a ceiling ring. In theory, it's supposed to help, so I use it. It's not required, so it's your call. Maple Leaf buckings are meant for open window barrels with no bridge. So take your barrel with the proper barrel cut, and the bucking will slide over with easy alignment. It should fall into place, really. You'll feel the bucking tabs pop into the barrel grooves. Make sure you install it in the right direction with the contact patch over the window. For better peace of mind, sealing assurance, and a potential FPS boost, wrap some Teflon tape around the bucking and barrel. I have always done this if the barrel and hop-up chamber tolerances allow it. Cut a piece of Teflon tape about this long and start one end on the edge of the bucking. I try and avoid covering the contact patch so there is no interference with the nub. Tightly wrap the tape around the bucking, then a few inches around the barrel. We are now ready to install the barrel into the hop-up chamber. Just a dab of Tech-T or other lubricant will make installation easier depending on your hop-up chamber. You can never go wrong with an Action Army hop-up unit, so that's what we are working with. Now insert the barrel like this. The alignment tab on the bucking will line up with the groove in the chamber. Everything should slide in smoothly without excessive force. When it stops, it should be all the way in. If you have a transparent bucking like this, you can check to see if the contact patch looks centered in the window. Now take the black chamber sleeve and slide it on the opposite end of the barrel in this direction. Gently push the sleeve into the chamber until it's pushed up against the bucking. Make sure the two holes on each side of the sleeve line up with the two holes on each side of the chamber. These holes are for the set screws that help secure the barrel in place. Now pay attention closely. The Action Army hop-up comes with three grub screws. One of them is shorter. The single, shorter screw goes on the bottom where I am installing it here. Don't snug it up yet. The two longer screws go in each side of the chamber through the guide sleeve holes and press against the inner barrel. Look through each side hole and make sure you see your inner barrel or Teflon tape. If you see black, your sleeve holes are not aligned. Line up the holes and install your two longer side screws. One on this side, and the other on this side. Tighten them gently and evenly. If you tighten one side at a time, it could potentially shift your barrel and cause a curve. So go back and forth and snug up all three grub screws. This next part can be tedious and requires a steady hand. Grab your nub of choice, in this case the Omega, and the small spring that came with the Action Army Hop Unit. I find it best to hold the chamber like this with the arm flipped down so gravity can assist you. Carefully place your spring in the arm. It sits in a small, round, recessed hole. The nub sits on the other portion like this. Try and center the nub the best you can, then I usually slowly tilt the chamber back while closing the arm. Use whatever method you'd like. Keep pressure on the arm, do a quick check by applying hop with your finger. See if the contact patch appears to look even under pressure to the naked eye. 
While still keeping pressure on the arm, grab a 2mm allen key and place a small threaded block in place over the edge of the hop arm. It should only fit one way and allow you to thread in the adjuster screw. Once you start the adjuster screw threads, everything will be held in place and you can let go. Moving on to the barrel spacers. These are a must. Stabilizing the barrel improves accuracy quite a bit. So slide them in place over the inner barrel. Make sure you have the right type for your outer barrel. These are G-spec spacers for a bull barrel, so there is no taper. Anyway, I like to put electrical tape on each side of the barrel spacers so they stay in place while installing the barrel group. We are almost done. I highly recommend lubricating the barrel spacers. It can make installation 10 times easier and prevent anything from shifting under force. Once you do that, you want this part of the chamber to sit in the outer barrel window. So just slide the entire hop up and inner barrel group into the outer barrel. If you have some resistance, you can use something like a padded tool handle to push on the back of the hop up chamber. Push a chamber in far enough so you can insert needle nose pliers into the hop up block notches. Grip the chamber and carefully slide the hop assembly into place. You want the front of the chamber hole to align with this hole near the hop window. Now we can install the hop up block. But wait, another thing I like to do is put a small piece of felt down first. Stick on felt from a craft store works great. Cut a small square and notch for the screw hole. Maybe use two pieces, but I'd start with one. Sticking felt here can help eliminate unwanted play and barrel movement. If you don't have felt, you can use tape, paper, or thin cardboard. Anyway, do what you want with that, then throw your mag block on. Before tightening the two screws all the way, I would position the hop-up chamber flush with the outer barrel window. Doing this can avoid VSR magazine issues, which I absolutely despise. So get her all lined up, tighten your block screws, and grab your receiver assembly. Take your outer barrel assembly, slide it over the cylinder, and thread it into the receiver. Make sure your front scope rail screw is out like I mentioned earlier. Thread the barrel in clockwise until it stops and counterclockwise until you line up the set screw hole with the set screw threads on the bottom of the receiver. You can install a set screw here if you'd like, but it's not 100% necessary. If you do install one, it has to be a super short screw so it doesn't hit the bottom of the cylinder. Again, do what you want with this and then we can wrap things up. Actually, it's a good idea to do another air test now to make sure your air seal is good throughout the entire operating system. Rack the bolt, plug the end of the inner barrel, and pull the trigger. As long as you have some air pressure after holding it for a few seconds, your air seal between the nozzle bucking and inner barrel is good. All that's left really is the mag release. Maple Leaf and Airsoft Pro make quality mag releases for the VSR-10. You want to install the button through the catch so the two parts are positioned like this. Don't forget the small spring and then you can drop the entire assembly into the stock. For this setup, I find it easiest to use a downward motion to insert the parts into the cutout in the stock. Be careful not to launch a spring across the room or it will be hard to find. Once the button is down through the hole, everything should stay in place on its own. Certain VSR-10 models like a Well MB-10 or 11 have the mag release system integrated into the mag block, which is my favorite. But now you can do the honors of dropping your upgraded VSR into the body. As always, a few small things to look out for. Make sure the front stock hole is lined up with the mag block threads. If it looks like this, simply remove the outer barrel set screw and rotate the barrel counterclockwise one turn. Experiment and test fit until everything lines up. Install your two main body screws, snug them down, and you are done. This particular rifle turned out great if you ask me. The stock design is a special taste, but the orange scope rail really brings the rifle together. Thanks again Kevin for buying all of the parts for this rifle. I couldn't have made the video without you, and I hope you enjoy the finished product. As for the chrono test, it was a very cold day, but the numbers still turned out to be pretty consistent. Last but not least, let's shoot my friend Garrett in the back. Now you're ready Garrett. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope this video is useful to somebody. Help yourself to some parts links in the description and hit me up if you're interested in a VSR-10 build or tearing carving stock. I'll see you next time.